Welcome to my first of hopefully many presentations on experimental and alternative music. I'm your host, William Akers, and today I'd like to examine the development of free jazz, the AACM, and the Art Ensemble of Chicago. I've been fortunate enough to participate in the experimental and free improvisatory music scene in Milwaukee for several years now. My first experience with it was early in my academic career, uh, and my intrigue and appreciation for it grew from there. One of the highlights from my undergraduate work was a senior project in collaboration with one of my uh, professors on the composition faculty and three other colleagues, which consisted of a full-length album of free improvisations. Reflecting on this project made me realize the magic and nuance in improvisatory music and the many incredible and spontaneous experiences I've had collaborating with other experimentalists and improvisers in the city. So that is why the focus of my research in the second semester of my graduate program has largely revolved around the free jazz movement in America during the 1960s. Free jazz was an experimental form of jazz that developed among musicians who wanted to push the genre beyond bebop, eliminating restrictions on form and harmonic structure. I found this to be quite similar to the way the postmodernist art music composers moved beyond modernism. Ornette Coleman is largely credited as one of the originators of free jazz, both musically and the way he challenged the social norms in the jazz scene. He was dressing differently, removing the hyper-masculinity from the performance, and focusing less on image and more on emotion and depth. Unfortunately, despite the explosion of free jazz in musical centers like New York City and Chicago, public interest was beginning to diminish in light of mainstream jazz achievements. This is still seen today with institutions like Jazz at Lincoln Center and the infamous Ken Burns documentary that conveniently leave out the vibrant and often challenging world of free and experimental improvisation. So in the 1960s, experimental musicians began to form self-help collectives to promote the careers of emerging artists. One such collective was Bill Dixon's Jazz Composers Guild, which successfully produced concerts featuring Cecil Taylor, Archie Shepp, and Sun Ra. Unfortunately, due to controversy within the group, it quickly disbanded only six months later. There was another organization founded on the south side of Chicago, however, that achieved great success in community engagement and the promotion of experimental music, and that is the Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians, otherwise just known by the acronym AACM. The AACM was founded by Muhal Richard Abrams, Steve McCall, Jody Christian, and Phil Coran with its primary mission to provide an atmosphere conducive to the development of its member artists and to continue the AACM legacy of providing leadership and vision for the development of creative music. The AACM first coined the phrase Great Black Music to describe its unique direction in music and pays homage to the diverse styles of expression within the body of black music in the United States, Africa, and throughout the world. They say this experience extends from the ancient musics of Africa to the music of the future. There are a number of ensembles that operated within the umbrella of the AACM, but one that particularly stuck out in the late 1960s was the Art Ensemble of Chicago. The avant-garde band evolved from founder Roscoe Mitchell's musical vision, explorations, and adventurous collaborations in Chicago. They are renowned for their promotion of the AACM mission of integrating musical styles that span the history of jazz and world music, but their ability to improvise as one entity and produce many unique sounds is what sets them apart. At the core of their instrumentation were saxophones, flutes, trumpet and flugelhorn, double bass and drum set, but have gone on record performing with over 500 instruments at a time. Every member was a composer, and this led to incredibly elaborate performances that featured costumes, face paint, props, theater, poetry, and dance to create a visual, auditory, and sensual spectacle. 
The art ensemble achieved incredible success in Europe, which led to extended engagements at venues and theaters across the continent, including a soundtrack for the French film La Stance à Sophie. The group's willingness to support each member's individual musical interests and personal goals, along with the release of more than 70 live performances, studio recordings, videos and DVDs on a variety of labels, thus further ensures their longevity. By no means does the story stop there, so I just wanted to highlight some incredible sources that were a huge help in digging into this exciting sound world of experimental music and free jazz. First and foremost, George E. Lewis's book, A Power Stronger Than Itself, is absolutely necessary for anyone interested in the AACM and the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Lewis joined the AACM in 1971 as a trombonist, when he was just a teenager. His performance work spans the whole spectrum of experimental music and performance art, and he currently holds the position of Edwin H. Case Professor of American Music, Composition, and Historical Musicology, and the Composition Chair at Columbia University in New York City. Other work that examines the societal atmosphere surrounding experimental music in the 1960s is Ian Anderson's book, This Is Our Music, aptly named after Ornette Coleman's album of the same name. Anderson's work also challenges the status quo regarding who makes decisions about the value of a cultural form and on what basis, as well as the apparent guardians of the jazz heritage. And uh, as supplementary uh, reading, I also enjoyed Nate Chenin's 2017 article over at NPR covering the 50-year history of the Art Ensemble of Chicago, as well as Giovanni Russinello's 2019 article for the New York Times and Hank Schemer's 2019 article for Rolling Stone. Thank you for spending some time taking a brief glimpse into this wildly thought-provoking and inspiring musical movement, and I hope we can do it again soon. Thank you.